Teddy, how many times have I told you to stop buying treats on Amazon? I don't care if it's prime shipping. That was $28 you spent on treats. Okay, you can buy treats. Spoiled ass. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Sarah, and I hope each and every one of you is having an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. You are joining me here in my unnecessarily fuzzy robe because, well, it snowed here for the first time in Western New York in 2020, and I intend to keep my happy ass right here in the house where it's warm and not wet and gross. Well, until I have to return to the office tomorrow because, you know, they, they keep sending bills and I keep writing no in red Sharpie, but then they just keep sending them, so I figured I probably should pay those and go to work. But I wanted to jump on and do a video, something that's just for fun. I wanted to do a reaction video to Amazon Answers Gone Wrong, the cycling and outdoors edition. So hopefully you guys will get a little bit of a chuckle out of this one. Just a good time, pretty lighthearted because we can all use a little bit of that in 2020. Now, most people who have participated in some form of e-commerce have probably used Amazon at some point or another to make their purchase. And most of the people who've used Amazon probably scroll down to those reviews every once in a while to see what the ratings are, to see what people have to say. And those reviews and ratings span the gamut between abundantly useful, filled with videos and pictures that are very helpful in making buying decisions, and then maybe the Karens who are giving their sump pump one out of five stars because their FedEx driver was rude to them. But if you're really looking for the nuance when it comes to shopping on Amazon, it comes in the Amazon Answers section. And as somebody from whom Amazon seems pretty determined to take half of my net worth, I have had no shortage of emails requesting that I answer some of these questions from customers who have purchased the same items as I have. And I have seen answers from the, hey, that's pretty thoughtful, probably could get a good answer from somebody else who's used the items, to, hey, bozo, just read the description instead of wasting my time, to, those certainly are all words, but I have no idea what the actual f you're talking about. So as I was shopping last week, looking around for a few things, I actually was thinking about putting a home gym into my spare room here as the gyms are open and closed every other week, it seems. And I would stumbled across some questions and answers for a couple of items. And then I ended up into this rabbit hole on Amazon, just looking at anything that I could look up in terms of fitness and cycling and came across a dozen or so pretty funny answers and questions that I thought I would share with you guys and do my reactions to. I uh, saved these about a week ago, so I'm just re reacting to them again today. So hopefully you get a kick out of some of them. I'll buzz through them and uh, let's see what you guys think. All right, so the first one was uh, I actually went back and took a look at the trainer table or desk that I reviewed a couple of months ago. And the question was, how large is the tablet slot? Seems like a reasonable question, and it's not anywhere in the description from uh, the Rad Cycle Desk website or Amazon site. And Joseph Scalet answers, large enough for an iPad to stand upright. Not a dimension. And while I know that Apple users think that Apple rules the world, it's kind of like a cult. I'm gonna get so many dislikes for this. It's just, it's gonna get real, real fast. Apple iPads are not a measurement. First of all, there's 4,827 iterations of the iPad. Which one can stand upright? Which one does it fit? Is it the Pro? Is it the Air? Is it the generation of Air from four years ago? Is it this year's Apple iPad? Which one is it? Not a measurement, not helpful. If you can't answer a question with some sort of dimensions or specificity that somebody could actually use, please don't answer the questions. Maybe I'm a little harsh, but moving on. The next one comes from an Olympic lifting bar, so like a barbell for like a squat rack or a bench rack. And the question was, how much weight can it hold? And I don't remember if this was in the description, but it's not an unfair question. And I like Angelo S's salty response here on June 18th, 2020. That timing is important because of, you know, the lockdowns and the crunch in fitness equipment. It doesn't. It will never show up. You won't be picking anything up with this. I promise. <laughs> Thanks, Angelo. Somebody's a little bit better in 2020. Question and answer number three comes from a pair of, I believe it was physique road shoes. And the question was, is it compatible, double P, with Crank Brothers? Fair enough question, the misspelling notwithstanding, because if you can't see the bottom of the shoes, which I don't think that the description actually shared a picture of the bottom, you don't know what the cleat bolt orientation is. Well, Alex, in his infinite wisdom, answered, no sure. 
maybe he could borrow an extra letter from the asker of the question. But when you get the email from Amazon that asks you if maybe you could help a customer answer a question, you don't actually have to log in and tell people you can't answer the question. That's really not necessary. It's Please don't log in and tell people you don't know the answer. It just makes you look silly. Anyway, moving on. The next question and answer comes from a Shimano Altegra chain, and the question was, does this chain have a bluish tint to it, or is that just the pictures? Fair question. I did look at the pictures. They did look a little bit bluish, so if you are not familiar with Shimano aftermarket chains, you probably wouldn't know that answer. There are chains that come in colors, so it's not an unfair question to ask. It was the answer that really threw me, and it was the fact that this answer came from the seller. Hi, this is Genuine Shimano Chain. I am authorized Shimano dealer. We have it. Bob. <laughs> if you ever see a seller answer a question about a product like this, you need to go run away. Go somewhere else, buy it from somewhere else, even if you have to pay more. First of all, you're the seller and you're not answering the question. You felt the need to validate the fact that it was a genuine Shimano chain when the question was, is it bluish? It doesn't matter if it's a genuine Shimano chain. The person wants to know if it's blue or not. You are an authorized Shimano dealer. That's nice to know. It seems like something that you would want to put on your store description and not an answer to a question that's completely unrelated. We have it. Typically indicated by the in-stock delineation on Amazon, but thank you for the verification that you have it. Bob. Thanks, Bob. Lowercase Bob. Can't even capitalize your own name, Bob. I can't. Moving on. This next one was from a pair of Shimano Dura Ace pedals. So the question was, what is the torque spec for Shimano SPD-SL? To be fair, it's a legitimate question, but this is probably not a question for Amazon, especially when you're purchasing a pair of Dura Ace, which is your top tier in terms of Shimano. Probably want to source that detail either on a forum or directly from Shimano and not by some bum on Amazon. I mean, I'm a bum. I'm on Amazon, so that's, you know, neither here nor there. Adam Eng answers with, should be, period, exclamation point. I don't know. Wh what? <laughs> what does that even mean? Should be, period, exclamation point. Maybe there was supposed to be a number there. I don't know. Torque spec is typically in Newton meters, but period exclamation point also works. I don't know. Again, back to this concept of if you do not know the answer to something and you can't qualify not having a firm answer with some context, don't just come on Amazon and tell people that you don't know. It's not necessary. The email explicitly says, can you answer this question? Not answer this question, even if you don't know. I got nothing. I got to keep going. I got to keep moving on. This was a good one. Don't ever buy a bike on Amazon, but I searched for bikes and I found a Schwinn road bike, probably something like 400 bucks or something like that. So super entry level, super cheap. And uh, this person asks, can women use this bike as well? <laughs> no. We've actually re reversed all of women's suffrage and civil rights here in this country. We are now relegated to being chained to our kitchens and we must make pie all day. We cannot use those bikes. I, to be fair, Pacific Cycle customer service was very charitable in their response and tried to make a pretty good assumption as to what this person was looking for and came up with, for this bike, we suggest a rider height between 64 to 74 inches. Thank you. That's a large swing. That's why it's a $300 or $400 bicycle. But that person or that customer service was far more charitable in their response than I probably would have been. I would have just been sarcastic and salty as hell. That's why I don't answer these questions half the time. This is another one that came from that same Shimano chain. Does this really work? It's not a diet pill, jackass. It's a mechanical item. It's a chain. Does it really work? I don't know, you're gonna have to turn it on to find out. What the hell are you talking about? These people answer the question, yeah, it works great, great quality. Your question is kind of vague. Uh, it's a great chain for 10 speed cassette if that's what you're asking. Probably about as confused as I was. Yes, very well by Hugo. And the best answer and, and the most sensible answer came from Dana Anna on May 31st of 2019. Yes. It's really all there is. It's a chain. It works. 
All right, so this next question came from that same pair of Shimano Dura Ace pedals that I was talking about with the torque spec. And this one isn't so much a bad Amazon question as it is just a complete representation of how ridiculous people can get with the weight weaning element of cycling. And the question was, Site description said that they are 228 grams. Later down the page, product description says 234 grams. Which is it? Listen, <laughs> I understand that we pay a lot of money to cut weight on our bikes and, and that's fine. And sometimes we do it to our own detriment because we can usually drop a few grams out of our ass and rather than spending thousands of dollars on parts for bikes. But we're not talking about a, a 30 gram or even 50 gram swing here. We're talking about six grams. If that difference between 228 grams and 234 grams is going to make your buying decision for you, you need to reevaluate your priorities as a cyclist and probably reevaluate your priorities in life because it's six grams, probably the margin of error in terms of measurement on something like that. But there were a few normal answers, but I particularly like uh, Rocco Bikes answer on November 28th, 2017. Mine were 231.32497678 grams. Well done, sir. Well done. The next... <laughs> the next... Okay, the next one comes from a pair of Burton Soft Shell Gore-Tex gloves. These are for snowboarding, skiing, all that stuff. I'm 5'11". Should I buy the large one? I'm going to remind you that these are gloves. Now, I, I thought it was just common sense that short people can have large hands, tall people can have little hands. Hands are just completely irrespective of height. Few people answered with, you know, an anecdotal response of, hey, these run a little bit large. That's completely fair. But Cackleberry hit it right out of the money. Not sure why height would matter for gloves. It's the only appropriate answer. I forgot about this one. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's going to ruin the reveal. Does it fog up when wearing a mask? It's a helmet, so it does not fog up. This is for a Giro. I don't even remember what helmet model it was, but it's just... I don't know if they thought they were asking on a different product. I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt because I don't understand why you would think a helmet would fog up, but, you know, there's that. All right, next one comes from another pair of cycling shoes. I don't remember what brand they are. It's not really that important. But the guy asks uh, in Spanish. So he asks, hello, good afternoon. Uh, the size 44, what is the equivalent in centimeters? Thank you. Mason felt compelled. Sitting at home Wednesday afternoon, reading this email. Amazon, ding, ding. Can you help this person with this answer, this question? Absolutely, I can. Logs in, types in his response. I don't speak this language. I just feel like anybody who does that is, is probably being an intentional asshole. Who, who logs into an Amazon account to answer, I don't speak this language? The, uh, other than an ass. I, I really, I'm trying to be charitable with some of my responses here. And Mazin, I think he's being an asshole. Moving on. Next one comes another one from the rad trainer desk that I was talking about earlier. And this person asks, I want to take this on an airplane. How big and heave? Okay, typos are typos. How big and heavy, I'm assuming, is the box in which it comes? And Kelly, in her infinite wisdom and inability to look at context, very light. The box was also skinny. It assembled in a minute. Um, now, let me remind you, the desk is 28 pounds. It came in a box that was about five feet long by three and a half feet tall by about nine inches thick. I, I'm not sure your level of, of measurement or comparison or, or relative understanding, but this person is asking about an airplane and you're telling him that a 28 pound box with those dimensions is light and skinny. The fact that it assembled in a minute, albeit inaccurate, is completely irrelevant to the point here. It, it's just not an accurate answer. Kelly, do better. <laughs> I don't know why that one bothered me. All right, here's the last one. This one, this one's a fun one. More, more gym equipment here. Uh, this one was for a Roman chair. And I really enjoyed the saltiness of the answer to this one. Will this build the lower back? 
That's the purpose of the Roman chair. You know what, Bud Bennett? You're absolutely right. Sometimes you just need to answer people directly and honestly and just let them feel dumb all on their own. But that's it. I hope you guys thought that that was fun. It was just, you know, these are things that just give me a bit of a chuckle. If you're ever feeling bad about yourself or just somehow bored, uh, just go cruise around Amazon sometimes. Go look at some of the mainstream stuff. Take a look at some of the questions and answers that come through that. You'll probably get a good laugh. Whether they're stupid questions or stupid answers, the human condition will never cease to amaze me. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Smash the thumbs up button if you got a bit of a laugh out of this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.